Welcome, friends and followers. Thank you for joining me for another edition of the Diecast Emporium Military Monday series. On this week's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the AVLB, the Armored Vehicle Launched Bridge. But before we get into that, let us first give a special thank you to our sponsors for Military Mondays, smallscalehobbies.com. Be sure to check out their web link in the video's description, especially if you are into military models or wargaming. So what is an AVLB? Well, the armored vehicle launch bridges have been around really since the end of World War II, shortly thereafter. And throughout military history, armories of the world have had to face the question, how do you get from here to there when there isn't a bridge present? Well, to be honest with you, the answer depends on how much time you have. If you're in a hurry and you have some heavy armor like tanks or infantry fighting vehicles, and you need to cross a gap or a river or a small stream, then you call in one of these bad boys, the AVLB, the Armored Vehicle Launch Bridge, sometimes called a scissor bridge, among other things. The vehicle consists of three main parts, the bridge launching mechanism, simply called the launcher, the bridge itself, and the vehicle hull. Now, the hulls are typically constructed on tank chassis of that era, Depending on battlefield conditions, the scissor-type bridge can be deployed in as little as 10 minutes and retrieved and stowed in under 15 minutes, again, depending on the situation and the terrain. AVLBs are capable of supporting the weight of the heaviest main battle tanks of their respective eras on a prepared surface. So the model that you have been looking at is a 187 or HO scale Rocco Mini Tanks M48 AVLB. This is one of the very first prototypes of this type of military vehicle. And again, it's on the M48 uh, tank chassis. Now, many of these were upgraded shortly thereafter um, to the M60 series of tanks and chassis. And today you'll find these scissor type bridges uh, on the either the M104 Wolverines or the M1074 Joint Assault Bridges, which again are both based on the M1 Abrams main battle tank, hull, and chassis. So let's bring it back to this model that you see in front of you. Despite it being a Rocco Mini Tanks model, it is actually quite functional. It has a lot of working features, which we will see here in just a moment. It does arrive mostly constructed. You do get a bag of some parts that you can put on this. I have not done anything to this uh, other than take it out of the box and put it out here to display. I do plan on adding some of the accessories that were included, maybe changing up the color slightly, and then obviously giving the tracks a different coat of paint. But now that you've seen this go round and round and round for the better part of three minutes, let's take this thing off the table and see how this vehicle actually functions. Okay, so this is a mobile bridge, obviously, so it can drive itself to where it needs to go. The main idea of these machines has, as I mentioned during the introduction, stayed the same for really the last 60 or 70 years. Uh, it carries no defensive or offensive weapons, I should say. The only weapon on here, if you could call it that, is some defensive smoke grenade launchers, and the idea there is to hide the AVLBs if it does come under an enemy ambush while it is being constructed. So we've driven up to our makeshift ravine. You'll just have to kind of picture that there's a gap here that needs to be crossed. So the vehicle will drive up. This portion will go down to help stabilize it. You can see a very large hydraulic ram here. And then your scissor bridge will literally fold out, as you can see. It will then lock into position. Then... Again, this area would be a prepared surface, so it would have some strong foundation under it to support the bridge and obviously the vehicles that are then crossing the makeshift bridge. Once that is secured and the area is uh, have a, has a nice perimeter around it, so you have a relatively safe area to transport your convoy across, the AVLB would then back out of the bridge like this. Usually it will either back off and let the other vehicles across, or sometimes it can fold this back up and then drive across the bridge, as we are demonstrating, kind of, sort of, here, and wait on the other side. So let's bring out a tank from this era. This specifically is an M48A1, which is the exact type of tank, chassis, and hull that this AVLB was constructed upon. 
So we have our tank he comes up to the bridge. He now crosses the bridge safely and he is on the other side. So let's imagine for a moment that the entire convoy has crossed the bridge. Everybody is safe. The vehicle itself will then come back and he will then retrieve the bridge by doing the same thing in reverse. You can see that there are a couple knobs here and that will lock into the bridge. Fold it back up. And now you're ready to go to your next site that needs a temporary bridge. So overall, the AVLB model itself by Rocco Mini Tanks for what you get is actually a pretty nice piece. Again, there are newer versions of this specific vehicle out there in HO 187 scale, just none that I could really get that have this amount of functionality and detail. Obviously, there is the Bully one, which I believe is based on the M60. To my knowledge, I don't think there's a model of the Wolverine yet. Uh, if somebody is aware of one that's out there, maybe Arsenal M makes one, uh, let me know, because I would certainly like to get the newest version of these AVLBs for my collection. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it, leave it a like and comment on it and share it with your friends. Until next time, thank you for watching. Be safe, be well. I will see you in the next review.